Hi everyone, this is Vlad from Modulus Render and in today's tutorial we're going to talk about how to create a realistic velvet material in Enscape and SketchUp. Now the problem with uh, velvet material in Enscape is that uh, we don't have a fall-off material to create a realistic velvet. So we have to kind of find a way to work around this. Now. I've prepared a little studio render or studio setup over here so we can take a look and I want to explain a little bit about the process I'm going to use. So basically what's missing from Enscape is this kind of fall off material or uh, texture that is darker in the center and it gets brighter on the sides of this uh, sphere. So, the way to work around this is to use lighting. We're going to talk about the, the texture and the materials, but uh, the most important aspect to get this effect, because we don't have a material to, to create a fall-off or a Fresnel effect, uh, we're going to use lighting. So, this chart explains a little bit the, the lights or the, the technique that I usually use for uh, velvet. We're going to use uh, indirect lights, so side lights uh, and rim lights or, or back lights. To further illustrate this, if we look at uh, this chart, we see the backlight that is hitting uh, the back of the sphere over here is creating a silhouette or a rim uh, light effect. So this is exactly what we're going to try to use in uh, Enscape. We're going to use lighting to simulate this effect of um, of a fall off texture. Let's just start Enscape and, and see what we have here. just put this on top so this is the sphere that we have over here and there's a little plastic material on it and make it a little bit smaller okay now, first of all, let's uh, put one spotlight uh, as a rim light and see how it looks. I'm using spotlights because they're uh, directional or adjustable, so I can adjust the cone and see where the light is hitting and control that uh, better with spotlights. So let's take a spotlight and align it to the side of the, of the sphere like that. Of course, we're going to move it a little bit back and up. Now, you're going to see the light appear over here, like that. And if I'll make it more intense, you'll see that it's hitting the side of the sphere. Now, it doesn't look like velvet yet. We have to tweak a little bit the, the material. So for the material, we're going to have a higher roughness, so it looks like this. It's not reflecting light, it doesn't look like plastic, so we need a, about 80% of roughness. And the other thing I do with, uh, with Velvet is change the specular percentage because you see if if we put it up to a hundred percent it looks uh, the material looks a little bit dusty and kind of a, a plastic feel to it so if you bring it down uh, it looks like this because uh, it's reflecting more of the ambient light and if you bring it down the default being 50 percent but if you bring it lower it absorbs light so it has that deeper uh, velvet effect if you will. 
we can use the the roughness to get a little bit of reflection, but not too much uh, to look like like plastic. So 80, 75 percent will will look okay. Now, if we want a, a more satin look or a more shine to it, we can increase the metallic effect, which will darken the material even more and make it look more um, it, it will give it more depth right but again not too much so it uh, doesn't look uh, like metal right just a little bit to to deepen this effect let's just leave it at, at zero for now and adjust the lights now as I said we can control the beam angle and the intensity we don't want to overdo it so it looks like that but we want to give it a little bit of uh, rim light on the sides and see where that gets us I don't want the, the angle to be too big so there's light uh, underneath or on the wall so that's why the spotlight is very effective in this case because I can lower the beam angle and then just hit my object like that right this is the the basic principle that I use uh, we put spotlights around the object only hitting the object so we get that halo effect on the sides the problem is we need more than one light so we can start playing around with uh, with more lights and then uh, adjusting accordingly right we we can have a light on top maybe maybe another one Right, and like this, uh, using multiple lights, uh, rim lights and um, back lights, we get this sort of gradient on the material. Now let's switch to our scene and see how we can apply these principles to our model. Now this is our scene with an armchair uh, in an empty room. The armchair is designed by, by Moot and it has a velvet texture applied to it now it's important that the texture we use has some variation in it some lighter areas and darker areas so it will look realistic in the final render now it's a simple room with an opening for the light to come through and uh, a wooden floor basically that's it so let's start and scape and see how it looks right now now the first thing I do before setting up the material is to set up the lighting of the scene in general. So I'm going to use some light panels that I'm going to build with uh, line lights. I have them already done on a layer over here so I'm just going to turn on the light panels. And the light panels are just line lights multiplied in this sort of light plane with a high intensity applied to the to the light so we get these really soft shadows over here and over here now I put two light planes on the outside because I want some uh, more softness in the shadows so I want the direction of the lights to be a little bit different so we get those those nice shadows on the wall and also another one on the inside so it uh, 
brings more light into the room because if I delete this, you'll see it's it's very it's a more of a dramatic lighting, and I want some even lighting inside. So let me just undo that. Now with with these light planes uh, in place, uh, if we take a look at our scene, we'll notice that that the left side is a little bit dark. The front looks looks pretty good, but the back is a little bit dark. So the way to fix this is with fill lights. Now for fill lights, I use uh, emissive lights on on simple rectangular planes because emissive lights don't give uh, a lot of shadow, so which is good. So I use those to lighten these darker areas. Now let me just turn turn on the uh, layer here with fill lights. Now you'll see how this whole side of the armchair gets brightened by these uh, fill lights without bringing more shadows into the scene. And these are just here and above. And the material for these fill lights is just an emissive light And that's it. The first thing I want to do is fade the image to a color. I don't want the, the velvet texture to be so obvious on my model. I want it to be more subtle. So I'll bring it down to maybe 40, 45%. Another thing that I want to fix is the specular level. So as you remember, the, the specular, the higher it is, the, the more, the, the waxier the, the material looks, or it looks like it's dusty or, um, or old. So we're going to bring it down to zero so it has that, that deeper feel, the depth in the material. And the other thing I want to do is bring down the roughness a little bit so we get a little bit of reflection but not too much so it doesn't look like it's um, leather or metal so 80 percent i think will be fine and if we want to have that um, shinier look then just increase the metallic value but again uh, small increments not too much so it doesn't look like it's made out of uh, steel So let's leave it like this for now and maybe fade the image to about 30 something percent. We can always come back and fix this later. Now already the light coming from the outside uh, is similar to a, a side light or a rim light because it's it's lighting these areas over here and it, it's starting to look uh, pretty good. We have to use um, the positioning of our object so that we take advantage of the natural lighting coming in from the windows or from uh, light sources in the room because for a top light we can use this uh, light source to kind of bring some light over here. Now for the the fall off effect that we're gonna create, we're gonna use spotlights again. So I want to bring some highlights uh, over here on this rim and here and of course on on this side, on the top, and on the side. So first I'm going to draw uh, a construction line, maybe from here. And let's take a spotlight and 
put it over here. Now it's the same idea as before. We can adjust the intensity so we can see the light. You see it's starting to appear over here and the beam angle. Now we have to be careful with the beam angle because we don't want any uh, light on the ground. So in my experience it's better to have like a narrower beam angle and use multiple spotlights. So for example, if I multiply this maybe eight times, right, we have a stronger effect and we don't have any light or shadows on the ground. Maybe we don't need all of those. But you see, this is the, the sheen effect or the velvet effect I'm looking for. And we can easily create this by positioning some, uh, some spotlights in the right way. Whoa, I don't know why that happened. So you see over here and over here, this is what we're looking for, that type of effect. Now it's a little bit strong, so we can always bring down the intensity to, um, to bring it down a little bit. But I want to exaggerate the, the effect so you guys can see uh, what we can do with just some spotlights. Now I've already made these rim lights and I put them on a separate layer. So let me just show you that. and how it looks. So these are the lights casting that backlight or rim light effect on my chair. And we can go a little bit back look at it it's looking pretty good we have that deep velvet effect that deep color and those uh, highlights on the sides that mimic uh, the fall off material that you would find in other rendering softwares let me just turn on the hidden geometry here the the plant and we can render out our image. Velvet. Now this is the final image that I did using this technique for uh, velvet materials in Enscape. I hope you found this information useful and don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and I'll see you in the next tutorial.